members this is kavita uh, ca kavita parmesh sikasa chairperson of bangalore branch greeting you all on behalf of bengaluru branch today it's my privilege to um, uh, take you all through this session uh, on the awareness program on uh, mca and v mca v3 and llp filings of course there has been a change in the uh, mca portal for uh, uh, and the efforts of the government in revamping this website are really appreciated however there has been a lot of concerns over the website which has been uh, revamped by the uh, ministry so today we have uh, with us cs tirupal gaurige who will be taking us through the uh, new changes in the mca v3 portal as well as on the llp filings the implications on the llp filings um, it's my honor to welcome and introduce cs uh, tirupal gaurige on behalf of uh, bengaluru branch and also i welcome all the members present in person as well as in uh, uh, virtually to uh, attending this program welcome you all cs tirupal uh, gaurige is one of the partners of uh, tirupal gaurige and associates llp he, uh, company secretary firm in bangalore he has been dealing with corporate law practice since 2004 he he has finished his degree in uh, venkateshwara university at tirupati and later he after qualifying as a cs he has worked with uh, as a full time company secretary with many listed and unlisted uh, companies till june 2004 july 2004 he is one of the insolvency professionals under the ibc code he appears regularly before the various authorities like national company law tribunal regional directors re, uh, register of companies official liquidators reserve bank and so on he is also one of the core resource persons of the blue book that is icsi premier on company law volume 1 2 volume 1 and 2 and also the commentary on the companies act released by the icsi he was one of the research members of the company law research team constituted by the center for corporate governance and research training by icsi mumbai for the year 2017 he has been a speaker on various forums including and various institutions like icsi icai icwi imb and iod so members Um, I am. Uh, it's my privilege to present you, C. S. Tirupal Gaurige. Welcome to you, sir. Thank, thank you very much, madam. yeah thank you very much madam kavita for uh, inviting me for introduction and for giving me an opportunity to share my knowledge about this version 3 in fact during the process i am the more beneficiary than you all was last 3 4 days we are struggling to find out the way what exactly the transformation from v2 to v3 that we lost ourselves in the jungle today also i tried to attend another session training session by our institute so some more clarity had come so with this i will try to put you what i know uh, the disclaimer is very clear that it is my understanding of this new system for last 2 to 2 and a half month Uh, i'll try to simplify the what exactly it is what is the objectivity of this particular uh, version 3 why they have gone with the version 3 so i'll try to share the knowledge in the practical sense maybe it may be useful to you guys yeah see as far as the disclaimer is concerned so the views expressed by me are of my own the organizers have no representation for the my views and this copyright i do not have any copyright on this ppt it is an open source ppt it is made only for educational purpose i copied entire content from the mca website and their pptis and i am indebted to them no permission is required to copy and use any part of this ppt I humbly appreciate and acknowledge the sincere efforts of my professional colleagues, Sir Kira Sheshidar, and our lovely daughter, Jan Janvi, in making and uh, 
bringing life to this ppt all credit goes to them all mistakes and errors and misconcept are exactly of mine only i'm the sole person to response for that yeah what is that mca what is the objectivity behind the this particular v3 version so v3 version is basically they are trying to tighten the lot of securities which were uh, loose ends in the version 2 which i found uh, you know useful however i found uh, during the construction or rather revamping the existing bridge certainly you will undergo all the challenges while in the construction moreover you have had a smooth flow of earlier transition now the one way you should allow the traffic and you should reconstruct the building also the bridge that is a problem that is a challenge here that means you are operating the patient patient should alive during the operation as well so the flow they cannot stop like they didn't stop in the corona the stock exchanges were functioning despite of your you know house arrest throughout the world and india also similarly the site has been developed around one one and a half year been developing uh, when they took over this uh, lnt took over around two years ago to build this particular version 3 they made live somewhere in the Pibra march uh, and then traffic is allowed to flow no traffic is stopped so during the traffic of course you will get all hurdles so that's exactly we are undergoing but the expectation of the traffic flow was was because why they took the llps first they thought the forms load and you know filing or number of hits the user ids through the llp will be very less because throughout india you have only early two and a half lakhs llps whereas if you take the companies you have got uh, around 19 lakhs companies are there out of that around uh, 14 lakhs companies are active so before they jump into take into the big leap uh, uh, in converting the version 2 to the companies so they took the like a pilot mode this particular version 2 uh, with two three of the llp mode alone so llp module is on the completely version 3 the objective of this uh, module is completely to have the complete data with them rather scan data that is objectivity see earlier you must have seen that we were scanning excluding uh, you know one or two cases like xbrl and other cases where you are providing the data to the ministry if the data is available with the ministry data mining is easy to them to do some value addition it may be take the inspection it may be the investigation or anything for that matter you know if the data is available the data will be handed over to the mission mission will come back with the result what desired result that was the whole idea of the you know mca version 3 you must have witnessed that all forms at mca version 3 are web based forms most of the fields are free fields you don't need to fill the data unless it is a new thing like you want to change the address of your company or sorry llp you can add the new address except that field all other fields will be free filled automatically in based on the existing data that is available so they want to have the data rather scanned images that is the whole objectivity of the version 3 so if the scanned image is there then roc cannot take out the print and hand over the scan image to the mission mission can't read the stand scan images so that is the whole idea of the that is one of the objectivity to collect the data and so that if you collect the data probably you can collect the data tons of tons you know or millions of millions of data without having the load on the system that is also one more objectivity is there and then second one is that they have enhanced in the security future who is submitting the data earlier the one single user called registered user though there were users called business users and uh, one more is the user by the bankers and all those roles were never regulated uh, to submit the data who is submitting from where it is submitted and from which ip address is submitted who has a control of your digital signature who has affixed your digital signature to the system these were never been controlled due to this lot of misuse or I can say rather uh, mischief was happened and they found a lot of cases like removal of directors, increase of shares in case of a private limited company. See, 
the proprietor receipts like rights will get changed if you allot the shares and if you remove the, some director then dispute will come and you don't know who has affixed the digital signature you must have seen gradually they have enhanced the earlier there was a image based scanned based dsc was there now today no such image based scanned dsc is there it is a live your video will be you know in a captured with a live maybe we don't know what exactly further they may tomorrow they may collect your retina also while doing your videography for your digital signature so they want to go with accuracy to the data who is submitting at what point of he has submitted what is the tool that he has used so they want to create the trials that audit trial you all know that that's exactly the version 3 it is so in that i told you this is enabling the business community of course they can you can register the companies all whatever the functions as under the companies act or in the llp act are available all functions will be available through the web based model completely web based model and the faster it will be and grievances like suppose some shareholder wants to file so some investor complaint earlier the form used to be scanned all those things now it's not that you just tag the person whom you have written a mail like a, there's a company secretary in a company and you are writing about your dividend not availability or maybe share certificate not availability or share transfers they are not affecting or they are not identifying your uh, nomination so many things will be there now today you can tag the particular person the mail goes to that individual mail also goes to the roc or someone else so tracking will be there again who has larger compliant is a fake compliant again the person who can do he should have got registered his band tan so many other email id mobile number so he should even re react for tomorrow something comes for the company he should be there to receive that as in today just compliance are raj later no one will be there to take the grievance as well. so these all those things are not happening now they mapped it one of the maps was i think all witness for last two uh, no not two even 2017 onwards the concept called kyc for the directors and the, after they brought the concept called kyc for companies then you file the form especially the 22a form is again kyc now every year kyc for directors e kyc or web kyc whatever it is again is a one of the pilot mode for the v3 version is a v3 version was slowly implemented one after other today they are moved, they have moved completely the llp version to the completely uh, to the v2 version so i will try to explain you the process and how exactly the user can do what kind of user that you can be and you can perform what are the functions you can perform and you can be observed and you can also observe something happening to your company and someone else is filing earlier if someone else is filing you don't get to know that whether the document is filed by x or y and why the document is filed unless you go to the mca website pay 100 rupees and do, do the inspection but today it's not so someone else files the form by using his user id but you will be in a position to see that because that form will land ultimately in your folder in your uh, portal of the company portal means it's a user id of the company you will get the documents filed by someone at what time they filed from user id all those things will be made available so we'll take next level of course employee of M mca also will get benefited because of the uh, you know ready made service ready made data that is there with them so uh, for, i think this i don't get into this is something like a website how it appears where and all panel is there logo search tab then what is the banner what is the mca card frequency questions notification tender you all know witness for last uh, one year uh, exactly, I think somewhere in the April of last year, they just done the pilot mode of 5% of the V3. They made it called V, that is a, a, a ebook. They converted almost all books, uh, in like uh, Companies Act, you have, then you have LLP Act with rules, regulations that are available, and they're from time to time, they're modifying with the annotations as well. So that's a great relief. In fact, you don't need to buy the books, uh, you know, maybe, maybe the books buying is very limited now. So that is the 5% of the V3 that they made it. And now it is a pre-edition. So you can have the completely uh, companies act updated one available online. So that is also there in this version three. Then again, important links are there. Then you have the put links. 
So many things are there if you witness the website. What is version 3? I wasn't telling clearly what exactly. I told you this is the version they have launched around 8th March. It's a process of upgrading present version of the portal in from version 2 to the version 3. As I understood, the version 2 was not built on the a concept called SAP model. Uh, maybe it must have been, but today they have completely moved to the similar to the SAP model. The uniqueness, you all know that you can't pass a duplicate entry. You can't pass the same bill again one more time in your books unless the invoice number is different or invoice date is different. You can't. Similarly, here also they brought the concept of data uniqueness. So that is the reason a PAN number cannot be used for multiple users. Similarly, email ID cannot be used for multiple users. Similarly, the mobile number cannot be used for multiple users. Entire data bank of this version 3, the number should be unique and should be attached to the particular, you know, the person who belongs, you know, they belong to him. So that person only can use it. And you are giving undertaking this my mobile number, this so on. So, on. so means you can't use someone's mobile number as well. So that is enhanced version. Right now, as I told you, it is for the LLPs only. But um, now few things they have, you know, enabled action software in version 3, login and user ID, uh, DS association and LLP for filing. These are the three features they have uh, enabled. Though if you go to the MCA website, uh, you may not witness which, uh, you know, login and we goes to the MCA and which login goes to the MCA from Prima PC. But unless you go to, there is two, I think. One is the my application and one more is the my service. In this two, one is tagged to the version two, another one tagged to the version three. If you click over there, then it will switch, switch to the website of the version three or it will switch to the website of the version two. There are two websites they are maintaining. So maybe I think one of the interchange feature is the data transfer from the one version to other, fetching the data. It fetches the version 3 purchase data from the version 2. Similarly, the user IDs registration of DSC right now, what is already there uh, before this, or you get the registered with the version 2, will be considered as a DSC registration for the version 3 for time being only. But they said clearly for version 3, DSCs again should be registered. So, but right now they are allowing, but they may tighten that also. So right now you have a three future. One is a login, user ID, DSE uh, association, and LLP filings. You can do with that. I just give the brief about these two differences of these two versions. The version two, as I told you, the e-forms were there. You download the form, attach the, fill the, some data, which they want to have the dashboard purpose, and attach the forms uh, like PDF version and upload it. Offline, everything you can fill and upload online. This was the version 2. Today, you don't have that concept. You should get into the website, like you create the user ID in the Gmail account and all you need to feed the data, then ultimately you submit it. Similar to that, you fill the data in the web-based forms, which are there in the after login only, not before that. Then completely, you should fill the data completely with the apply online only. You should be always online to fill the data and the system will allow you he give alert, alert you every 10 minutes that whether you want to extend your session. So in the version 2, that alert is not there. Here you will get an alert. You want to extend your session. Yes, you can continue to extend even 2 hours, 3 hours also. There is no problem. Whereas in version 2, whether the option was not there to extend, but it will get expired. So here that, that future is there. It's very good. Welcome future. And as I told no, if you go to if you go to the MCA website, and you click over the my workplace, it will go to version 2. If you click over the my application, then it will go to version 3. These are the two links, two gateways to go to the different versions. So the version D2, any name could be your ID, user ID. You are an individual developer, you can give any name. It may be your name or anyone's name. It can be alpha numeric, anything can be. Today, for individuals, for version 3, is only email ID. You must have witnessed if you are the uh, like IP professionals, IP Bay website or IIP's website, only email IDs are allowed to be used as a user ID. You can't give the different name for that. So here also they say your email ID will be your ID, means login ID. 
for companies and for llps their sin number and lp number is the user id so because they are the unique for company sin can be unique for llp again lp is a unique for individual your email id plays very important role so i suggest whoever is going to create the email id especially professional i suggest to them to create a user id with your own uh, personal like gmail accounts because when i witness inside i don't know they may allow the future at later date i don't know once you give the user id of some gmail account or, or some assume that you are working from and use that form your user id that forms extension mail whatever it is given to you to format the rate so and so and if you leave that form and that user id you can't change it and mails will go to that user id only not your email so that is a submission even mca was telling uh, better to use either you have your own form you can go with your own email id uh, while creating the user id that's some try as a professional you are creating or a business user creating email id should be there at least which you can have access after leaving the services so that is my submission because that id you can continue to operate life long and they have not given till date to change your email id as id i don't think even in google we can change our email ids i don't think you can change unless you migrate that google account to the paid account then they will convert that on their own so that is a one future which i found so then again earlier once you create the user id earlier was called a registered user first four hours you can't even do any transaction with that like you know when you add your someone's bank account your account first 30 minutes they will not allow you to transact because they want to avoid the fraud so someone you know access to your account and is trying to transfer the fund after adding someone's account here also that facility was there in v2 version 4 to 5 hours approval time was there today this version 3 you create the user id and you start using that user id immediately you can use it then earlier is a very very beautiful future which i understood from my you know experience you must have also experience suppose you have for your entire office one user id for the mca and if you log in from one mission and if you try to log in in another mission it says clearly you logged in somewhere else you log out there and you come here something like that whereas in the present version 3 a multi login of the same id on the multi system is allowed but there is a one check each time when you open a new pc as you know the google account suppose you tap uh, map river google to your mobile or a particular computer if someone else is trying to open your google or you go to some other pc and trying to open your google you will get one otp to your mobile registered mobile similarly here also when you are trying to open means you will be knowing the owner who has created the user id should know that someone else is trying to log in is so he will get one otp unless he shares this op otp that other person cannot interact cannot log in it this is a very good future and so that suppose i feel with this future one user id entire office can use it so that means simultaneously you can keep working which was not a future of the version 3 it's a beautiful future i feel that is a you know wonderful then it will create wonder means it will reduce the users ultimately as i was told in the version 2 only 35000 users in one go can log in in the version 2 if the, that's what you must have got the message in the especially annual filing seasons that is a large user so and so number you try after some time here if the one user is allowed to open in multiple system with the otp facility he doesn't need to you know users has no matter so that is the my submission so it may help us so load also will come down of course functions may be there so the restriction is not there similarly earlier anyone can log in on any system only it used to say that boss you logged in somewhere logged out that was the uh, check was there today no such check. earlier was no otp system here otp verification is there simultaneously to open in other system digital signatures was free earlier freely registrable but you must have aware of for income tax if you want to get registered your digital signature you should log in from your pan number isn't it 
we all know it for income tax website you should get into the user and go to the you know principal contract change your details then add your digital signature that means in income tax the future was there so not to misuse your digital signature whereas in mca that future was not there now they integrated that future after login that means if i will tell you what are the types of users are there so a particular type that was my pan number my digital signature only can be attached because in my digital signature my details are there and it will verify intern with because i acquired digital signature by getting my pan number isn't it my name what is there in the pan same way they will verify whether real it is their same name or not then only it will accept and that to in my user id that to inside of the my uh, income tax website similarly here also it will verify same way suppose if, if you want to attach the director digital signature you should have a user id for director as a director user uh, it is it falls under well within the business user so business user we have a director or a dp partner user a designated partner user or you have the other feature called professional user okay so these two are there suppose you are a company secretary of the company or ceo of the company or cf of the company and your digital signature is to be used you know that you should have a company user id is created so there is a business user called company business user called llp should be created over there in that your form 32 should have been filed that is a dir 12 should have been filed as a company secretary of that particular company then only your data will be popped automatically while going for dsc registration if you are not attached your data with the, by filing dr12 you can't do anything earlier we are being a company secretary and having your details at institute website was enough to get your digital signature as a dsc registration today it is not not only having data at your institute website your data also should have been attached to a particular company where you are a company secretary or where you are a ceo or cfo it's very beautiful feature because misuse cannot happen unless your knowledge unless you are attached to that so that is the digital signature is a great help and there are certain like you know java baba something you should download before you. here also they given inside the login you will get some tool that is i think some sockets tool something socket it is called you should download the socket tool and it will get installed then only your signature will be recognized by the socket then you can affix your digital signature for registration purpose so we'll go to next yeah this i told you yeah see the they want to make the existing registered user and you are there for lot from 9 2006 onwards you have been using that particular user id called registered user id they don't want you to lose the data in the version 2 and also they want to allow you to convert yourself into the uh, business user so first time you can go to the version 3 and give you were the registered user id which is your name not may not be in email id earlier that id can be used first time in the version 3 and password can be given and after login there is a feature called uh, at profile update if you go to the profile update there you will find to change your role from registered user to the business user and the well within the business user you can use uh, concept called uh, professional concept called director or it may be an officer who is in default or it may be when a ceo cfo of the company secretary or other as a representative of a bank so then you can select the role then your role is fixed now after that your user id will become your email id so i will take you through that how it is going to help you to understand this okay if you suppose you want to create a new user id in the version 3 and your user id must be a new email id which is not there in the entire version 2 system that means you should create by giving a new user id new email account new email id including your own pan new pan should have been there including your mobile number new mobile number should have been there including i think pan tan mobile email id this pan number mobile number email id these all three should have been unique 
then only you can create a, a new user head in the version 3 if these things are already used in the version 2 and they are saying till date we have a problem we are unable to migrate they are saying that you will be allowed to migrate suppose you have earlier the pan uh, and the user id and the mobile number was not mapped properly so same the mobile number or the email id must have been given to the multiple ids so there ends the problem there has a problem those multiple IDs, unless the mca allows you you can't migrate into the uh, uh, you can't migrate into the business user similarly you can't create the new id by using those credentials so this is the exact uh, problem right now everyone is facing they are unable to migrate because of the multiple time the pan or email id or mobile number is used for multiple user ids in the past which the data exists in the version 2 so this is a problem so then go into the version 3 login that i has already told you once you log in with your existing user id of version 2 after login you can go to the right side top corner there is a profile update is there there you can change your profile update to the business user in the within the business user you can say professional director and professional staff member officer and default like the different different user ids you can select you means profiles can be selected yeah you may ask me question in the version 3 is there any registered id concept yes version 3 a very limited purpose Rather, I can say it is like entry purpose. Like you want to create an LLP. Uh, like promoter himself wants to create an LLP. Right now, LLP feature is there. Maybe in the company sector, it will come once they move migrated. There, to interact with MCA, you need to have one user ID called registered user ID. Registered user ID, you can't do any function except obtaining the name for your LLP because when you go for incorporation of LLP, you may not have your L pin, uh, L, sorry, DIN number or D pin number. That is the reason they say, okay, let you create the company or LLP with the registered user. You can log in and get the name and file for incorporation. Post incorporation, you will get your uh, uh, DIN numbers and you need to convert that registered user, which is a temporary user, to the business user as a, a designated partner if you don't do that that particular business user user cannot be used for any other purpose it is it will become a dead dead user id so better to migrate it you can't create another user id as a professional uh, as even the director because your credential is already captured through the registered user id mode so you should certainly migrate that register user id to a business user id and then from there you should select your role as a director or a DP or even the professional if you are a professional. So this is the one. So now uh, migration is must uh, for existing also. Only individual can register. Again, this registered user ID, only individual can register. That to temporary because they don't have DIN number. That is the reason companies cannot create registered user id now company must create in the version 3 if they don't have any user id earlier created in the name of company they can create only business user and that to business user with the sin number of the company and it will have the user id mobile number contact number i think i will take to the process then you will understand okay once you create the registered user and migrate to the business user then your id will become permanent so this is the one you should keep in mind. That's the reason I told you when you have the uh, registered user as your Gmail account and it's the same is going to be permanent business user, you can't change the ID details and mail will continue to go there. Message will continue to go there and you can't change the mail ID also. So better to have if possible with permanent mail ID like Gmail or something like so that you will not, you don't need to change from time to time. And for registered user, PAN, DIN, membership number are not mandatory. And for converting, while you convert yourself, then those things should be provided. This is all I was telling, uh, like home email ID is the only unique feature. SIN, uh, LPIN is the only unique ID. 
that will be considered and i think um, there is another future as i told you know you have in the business user one is the director role or the partner uh, dp then you have another role called professional there is another future that they are right now it's not functioning but they today they told us they are going to make functional the concept called professional staff member a professional staff member can create his own user id under the head business user id wherein he will be providing the a membership number of the professional under whom he is working he should give the membership id mobile number and then email id and this particular gentleman also while creating his mobile number his email id his pan number also should be provided whenever this gentleman is interacting by using his email id one otp goes to the professional boss also boss will be knowing what the assistant is doing each time i think when login that's what the enabling feature so you can allow your trainees or your article ship people or you can allow your uh, paid staff to create their own user id by tagging that user id to you so you will be held responsible not them that's not clearly you, whether it is like an agent relation agent and principal relation so it's not principal to principal but this man the professional uh, staff member is allowed to have a limited role to perform you can allow him what role he can do like you have your own software called sap you know stage wise you have authorization to interact with the llp the sap is data system whether he can pass a, a modification entry he cannot pass at what level he can do similarly here also your staff can create one separate user id by tagging your details that user id again will be under your control login may be with him but it in your control with respect to otp and all will be there so login system requires otp from you then you all know that in the mca not only mca in earlier that business user of mca and even you go to the any kind of um, uh, email account there is a recovery mechanism here also they created recovery mechanism with respect to the hint questions and hint answers can be anything they are given around 5 6 uh, questionnaires and you can answer those specific questionnaire but you should make a note of them somewhere otherwise if you forget that hint question you never ever able to retrieve your password so that is a one you know uh, very salient feature of this uh, business user and well within the business user so hint question hint answer both should be remembered and even you have the mobile or gmail account or whatever the email account is given but revival can happen only retrieval can happen only when you are able to answer your question and if you are not able to answer gone your id will be blocked permanently i don't know whether mca will help you on a case to case basis to retrieve your email id we don't know we need to understand we need to see way forward of it goes see most of the data as i told you moment you go with a um, lpin login suppose as a company uh, like you all guys like paid challenge the person who is uh, uploading the form who is making the payment this data will be displayed on the paid challenge here the company data will be automatically displayed because we are doing login in their website or their whatever it is so that data will be captured right beginning pin code city area details all will be captured by the system on its own wherever in any form that you fill any function that you do this data will be found you know fix that will come automatically as i have already told you email id multiple ids are not possible same email id one email id um that one the pan is not mandatory uh, when you create registered user temporary id pan is not mandatory but now we found uh, yesterday while migrating from the registered user id to the business user id pan is asked they are asking pan verification but there is no field to fill the pan maybe this they may rectify but they are saying uh, for uh, temporary you don't need even give a pan number but migration is not happening so what i will try to do now i will try to take you through the few slides uh, with respect to the different uh, business user uh, how it goes process uh, through the snapshot i'll try to take you then if you have anything you let me know 
I'll just move on. Yeah, this is the version three login page of it appears when you click on my application. When you click on the existing login, it will go to version two. If you want to get this, no, you have to click somewhere, you know, uh, my application. This will come automatically. So if you come here, if you want to create a new user ID, like any other Gmail account, you have to come to the register with this page. Once you log in, once you go for registration, then you will be asked which ID you want to create. So there are that broadly two categories are there, as I told earlier, registered user and business user. Registered user, again, as I told you, only individual can create the registered user. No company can create the registered user as of now as a new registered user under the version 3 mod. So when movement as a registered user, the role where user role will come as only individual. The pan, if you look at the pan, there is no star mark is there. But right now, if you fill the pan and it will while migrating after incorporation of a company, it will certainly uh, be smooth process. So I suggest to fill the pan number here. Right now, time being, I don't know what. They said very clearly pan is not mandatory, but in practical, when you do, it is asking at the time of migration without having filled. So once you go to the next step, then you will be giving your name as per your pan card. Maybe not as per pan card that appears in the pan. It must be as per the pan data bank. So pan authorities gives you option that you like as you like you name whatever the you know order you want to have you know, it get printed over the card. Whatever the data bank is that different here they are verifying from the data bank of the pan records. So you should provide your name like a first name, middle name, last name as per the data bank of the pan. Then provide the data bar and uh, thereafter. You need to say what kind of professional you are. Are you a professional? Are you a doctor? Are you a student or housewife? The role, what he as a businessman, like that various profiles. It is as good as occupation. You need to provide the occupation. The various types of industries are there. They want to go the idea of collecting this data from you. They want to know what kind of business user are interested in creating IDs and interacting with the site. And if they are interacting, what they are doing with this. What is the data they are weaving? What is the data they are extracting from the MCA? That is that they want to know. See, as I told you, you know, if you select the different uh, industry, if you are a company, uh, of course, registered user, you will not get this data. An individual, you selected, you have a different occupation, then you will ask which field you are into. Are you working in healthcare? Are you working in manufacture, mining, quarry, public, so on, so on, so real estate, you have to provide it. So this is the uh, mandatory then um, thereafter you will provide your address here before providing address first you select the country and if you don't select the country you will not be in a position to fill other fields so select the country once you select the country state will be allowed to be selected once you select the country and state thereafter pin code should be filled once pin code is filled thereafter option what they did they went to the postal department uh, like example, you go to the like Jainagar 5000, uh, 5 lakh and what is it? 560011. And this 560011, how many sub areas are there? All sub areas will be displayed. It may be what is that? Uh, fourth block, third block, seventh block, eighth block, ninth block, east end, south end, all will be tracked. That means they're pinpointing your address as per the postal records. So it will come automatically. You just do the drop down. Then provide your STD number, phone number. Uh, these are not mandatory. If you want to provide, you can provide. And mobile number, again, I think mobile, email ID, and then uh, PAN number. These are mandatory and these are unique. They may not allow to use multiple times same ID. So one should be careful. The ID what you are giving or the mobile that you are giving or the pan you are giving will be unique, which is not there in the existing system anywhere in the V3 or V2. As, as I told you, if you select like Delhi and I gave some pin number, then in the within the Delhi with that pin code, what are the places tagged to that? Like Karnat place, Bengal market, Baroda house, then election commission, Janpur, Krishna, like that so many areas will come, you have to select among that. So it is a beautiful, they have made entire thing, pin the data so that for a postal man, it is easy to locate where you are. 
and thereafter certain data after you select it you need to provide the mobile number then uh, you need to provide the email id as i told it is it should be unique then password password of course they are given parameters like in alpha numeric with uh, special characters then one capital one lower letter this 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 all uh, like your google also throws same errors so here also they are throwing you know character to create the you know, uh, uh, password they are given lot of then again into question this is the one i told you know you should make a note of it if you lose it gone you forget about user id till date there is no system wherein they can retrieve today i was attending they told me clearly if you forget in question and mc has no control to retrieve your password it is self driven control to retrieve your password based on the data that you provide that is int question and int answer so be careful for providing int questions around 6 7 are there and based on that int question you need to give the int answer somewhere it is better to record it and do remember that then only you can retrieve your user id otherwise you can't retrieve this int question and int answer is there for all types of user ids and one should be very careful about this as i told you same int question is the same and about you have to select this i agree for the terms and conditions here is the one option that you would like to have the like any other private website promotional information will be made available to you through sms like a update about someone has filed form on your company behalf or a company where you are a director so you will be alerted wherever you are director some form is filed you will be alerted if you select here yes if you don't select yes then you will not be alerted like login someone is trying to login your user id and it alert will go again account details updation like suppose you want to get your user id password or whatever it is change no again account dates updation lastly mc updation also like notifications they are targeting to play to the sms mode or maybe whatsapp also tomorrow we don't know mc will go and work the value additions value added services so otp system so it was a past after uh, you know e kyc or regular kyc the otp system was uh, and how somehow introduced to the mc system now where where otp is there for entire process of mca you should remember otp 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 for e register user at least you will get only one otp for business user and professional user you will get three three otps one will go to mobile one you will go to email id one will go to your boss also so like three three otps are not there now they say otp time is one minute if you see there is a timer the one minute it is only so all email ids all uh, mobiles if you don't get otps in one minute there is another otp will generate so there is a lot of confusion which otp was generated in first minute which otp generate in second minute because each time you will get all three vote different otps so this is another challenge our may we in fact today requested the mca to make the otp time is 3 minutes they say no we'll make it only 1 minute so they say we have our own system problem system cannot hold the otp beyond if you look at your bank i think they give some 5 minutes time here they say only 1 minute 60 second they said so this is again challenge let us see how they are going to operate at future once you give the otp you will get this beautiful message called congratulation so as if you achieved so everest mount so you can get the user id and email id it says clearly your mobile email id is your login and the password has been uh, restored all those thing will get the message so this is all about the registered user very simple but you can't do anything except uh, getting the name approval and incorporation of llp right now next one is the enabling feature is called a business user in that you have director user in the business user you have another class called a professional user then thereafter you have the uh, uh, professional staff member user and you have thereafter ceo cfo company secretary other secretary user uh, like that three four roles are there there is again officer and default user also there so i will through, go through one after other now let us move on to the director user business user well within the director user now the same process you need to select the called business user and you should say what is your role you need to select as a director or dp as your role then income tax pan for him is not mandatory but din is mandatory uh, why they are this feature is enabled uh, not as a pan 
you see many of the uh, foreign national or foreign directors, they do not have the income tax PAN number, whereas they have the DIN and DP number. So this feature is enabled to every person who is a director or DP to interact with MCA. They made it mandatory only DP in not the income tax PAN number. That means you can create the user ID uh, within the business user as a director or this this future this user ID is a must. If you want to register the digital signature of the director, at least one user ID should be created. One only will be allowed. So that user ID only, suppose you have a situation, I will tell you, uh, the director has multiple companies and he has multiple uh, service provider like chartered accountants and company secretaries. And one person only has created the user ID or the director himself has created user ID. And now the digital signature is expired. None of the professional, none of the you know consultant can update his digital signature. Only the director or the professional who has the digital signature and who has the uh, registered ID as a as a director under the business category only can upload your digital signature. You can't upload otherwise. That is the challenge feature of this particular business user with the uh, DP or the director. So here, as I told you, PAN number is not mandatory. Then, you, of course, you need to provide your uh, uh, role as a director. Here, the IPAN they are given, but that, uh, that uh, star mark is given for the income tax PAN, but that is not mandatory. It was clarified uh, clearly even today also. So DPIN, DPIN is the mandatory. And once you give the DPIN, your data will be passed as per the master data. Nothing to be filled. You don't need to fill anything, first name, second name, third name, not whatever you have. The director has no the name automatically is pre filled because you already filled the data. Data birth also will come automatically. Next gender also will come up automatically. And then address. The address also will come automatically. If you want to modify, you can modify, but it also comes automatically. Then there is a telephone number and office number. These are not mandatory. Thereafter, the mobile number, email ID, you not editable. This mobile number email ID updation for the directors and the deep in holder, you all know that one should file the DIR 6. Whenever you want to change this mobile number and email ID within 30 days, whenever there is a change for these two, one should file the DIR 6. After filing the DIR 6, you may need to file the KYC form, online KYC form, then only you can change these two numbers. I understood once you file the KYC, System is not allowing to file DOR, DOR 6 during that year. The KYC should be filed by September. Before September, if there is an email ID change, there is a mobile number change, first you file the DIR 6. Thereafter, you file the uh, web-based, uh, not web-based, that is a form-based KYC uh, with the MCA system to update your email ID in mobile number. Because they send OTPs again there, DIR6 also there is a OTP system. Assume that you have filed KYC, web chaser KYC, and after September till April, no DIR6 will be allowed to update your mobile number and email ID. This is the practically we have observed. So practice that next six months, you will not be allowed to file the DIR6 for that. Only it will be allowed only in the April onwards of the next year. This is the very, very, so one should be careful if you don't want to change, no issue. If you want to change after the September, any email ID or mobile number of the, I'm trying to tell you, this is the present system, which we are witnessing the system. There is no return record anywhere, but we witness the this thing. So to change email ID, mobile number of the director, DIR6 should be filed that to before September, not after September. After system, system will not take it. It will say you already filed the KYC. No updation is permitted. That means six months, no updation. So here the data will be fetched from the DEN data bank. So automatically all data will be captured here. And now password again is there. Password is there and confirmation password like int question. Again, director should remember what is the int question and int answer to be given. So as per my understanding, it is like a pan uh, like in the income tax website login, user ID login, here also uh, it should be with the profession, it should be with the director himself, not with any professional, not with any consultant. 
uh, that is the idea i think that is the um, objectivity of the ministry because uh, there are complaints uh, against the professionals uh, in various courts also saying misuse of the digital signature by the professionals of a director without having valued authorization letter to use their digital signature now they don't want to you know go to that extent so maybe it will help the professionals also to save their skin not to use the director's digital signature in the r premises yeah the again they say no the sms alert the director can select uh, sms alert purpose like so many updation like any form is filed by using is din number in any system anywhere in the mcs version 3 he, this director will be updated there is a form filed by you uh, for a particular app appointment of a particular person or particular company and wherein you are a signatory there or wherein your din is used uh, as a you know like a change in designation resignation purpose so alerts will be sent to the particular email id and mobile number and sms they are right now they are facilitating but i understood they may send by mails also a registration alert if there is a change in the details login alerts the account details then you have mc updates all will be updated to your uh, sms maybe so cause notices issue to you will be updated yeah so again uh, into question is a very crucial int answer is very crucial once you submit into question int answer you will be sent two otps like you have the similar to the dr6 similar to the kyc online or offline you have two otps one otp comes to on your mobile register mobile another one on your email id so unless you submit this to your registration as a business user well within the director will not be completed so once you submit again the otps as i told earlier it is having only 60 second validity so both you should act you know providing the same here once you get this again you will get again yet another beautiful message like congratulation so you will get and again the user id of the director is only email id not his din number like unlike company there is a sin number unlike company or a pan number uh, sorry it is in case of llp there is l pin here the user id is the Company's email ID. Sorry, your email ID. So again, I told you, director. Also, I don't suggest director to use any company's email ID because he may be leaving, joining many companies. He may be uh, may be moving the away from the company. Whereas this email ID will continue to be there, and you can't change the email ID. All alerts will go to that email ID, which is blocked by the company or your ex company. So probably the difficulty will be there. So. the issue is that better like you have a personal mobile number get better to have a personal gmail hotmail or any other mail for that matter which is in your control which will not get blocked at any time this is going to be permanent then you have the next category business user well within that you have a professional category and you and me are interested in it so how it works is again you all knows that it is first should be selected in the business user there after professional category once you select the professional category the pan number is a must that means now they are collecting the data from pan and uh, they are collecting the data from un income tax website collecting data from our institute as well where we are registered as a professional so pan will be verified uh, after the pan verification it will ask to select uh, you are icai or icwi or icsi institute and you provide your professional membership given by the icai or icsi depending upon membership then here uh, your name should match with three records uh, at least two records it's match one is the income tax record and then ip uh, sorry the institute records both should match it will verify both so one should ensure the date of birth first name second name all those things whether similar or not again you are a professional what kind of professional are you practicing are you employed are you self employed all those things should be provided suppose you are working somewhere again you should give what kind of profession you are doing so those details should be provided uh, again data uh, your address should be provided here again as i told you first you provide the country then you provide the state then you provide the pin code and all other details will be propped up uh, and then you select the drop down then the
let us hope with all problems will be resolved soon there will not be any issues yeah so we are just moving towards the business user well within the business user you have a professional user the professional like you and me are supposed to get registered to perform your functions even you want to fix your digital signature for any form for that matter if you don't have any professional user id you can't affix your digital signature on any form because to affix your digital signature your digital signature should have been registered with the uh, mca system to register mca system earlier anyone can without login they used to you know register your digital signature but that is not there now this functionality is been moved to the after uh, login after login by a specific individual user based on his role maybe director it may be professional so creating professional user id is must for each and every professional who is interacting with his digital signature for filing any form it may be llp or even company later once they move to the company also into the v3 platform so one should be very careful how to create the professional user however as i told you there is a concept called migration uh, if you have got a registered user under version 3 and using that version 3 user id you can go to the version version 2 user id which is a registered user go to the version 3 and give the first time first time it will take the user id as it were condition and the password also it will take and you go to the inside after login and there is a profile profile updation is there below you were uh, sign out uh, tab there is a profile and in that profile it will mandate you to change your registered user to professional user id so all the existing user ids will be converted into professional user id what they collect they collect one is that your email id which is going to be like a login and your mobile number and your pan number and institute credential like where you are in registered what is your membership number all those thing they will collect information from you and then convert that your existing uh, registered user id into a professional user id assume that you have not given your pan tan your no span or your mobile number email id for any of the registered user id under version 2 you can create a fresh user id called professional user id in the version 3 by providing your credentials so we are going to talk about how to create the a professional fresh professional user id wherein none of the credentialities like example pan number or gmail or email account or maybe the mobile number or institute details are not used in the version 2 now we are going to create a express user id It will be like this so you should select as a business user then you should select your role as a professional then pan is a mandatory to you guys then thereafter you need to yeah pan is a mandatory then thereafter you should select the institute details where you are registered uh, like ici icsi icwa then you need to give your membership number given by the institute and the mca goes to the institute website and uh, go to the pan website and verifies the your data that is provided and uh, it will be collecting your data from there your name then surname middle name date of birth and whether you are a salaried or you have an, any other experience like your industry or your occupation is some the industry so it is needed to provide that data then thereafter you will be providing your address then address i think it should be maybe you need to be very careful the address may need to be as per as me as concern like i am also insolvency professional so all as per the ibba rule wherever i am acting as insolvency professional i should use the registered address of mine or the ibba records probably here also 
you may need to register that address that you have given to the institute because they may verify that you have provided institute at one address and you are residing at different place you didn't update the same to the it may be a professional address it may be a residential address but here they have not said what kind of address where you are staying they're asking contact details only but better to maintain one address if you have a reason you can give different address again the address first you should select the country then thereafter the state then pin code then balance like a city and area local area will be displayed automatically then your mobile number should be provided thereafter password should be provided as per the parameters given over there so i think minimum uh, six characters should be there with capital one letter you know lower one letter up then special characteristics then into question into question is very crucial as i told you earlier also for every user id in question and in answer is a very crucial so somewhere you should store them because you cannot interact or mca cannot help you to retrieve your user id uh, password if you lost so once you provide your into question whatever it is then it is a one radio button which you need to select either yes or no with respect to the sms alerts on your mobile if your mobile uh, if your mobile membership number is used some digital signature is used here and there or someone try to log in your user id or some form is uploaded by using your user id some form is signed by using your digital signature or any account details updation everything will be sent through sms so you can i suggest you can go with yes option rather going no uh, then thereafter uh, your id will be created then you will get the message that your id is created and your id will be compulsorily an email id that is the id to login i think before that in one slide is missing yeah two otps will come to your email id and one mobile number after submission of OTPs, then you will get your registered a business, uh, not a business professional user registration. Then we are moving towards the company and LLP. So company and LLP, why do they need registration? Suppose a company can entrust the job of filing to a professional, then professional can use his user ID, can upload the form by using professional ID. If suppose company has in-house system and if they want to file the forms or it may be LLP, they can't file the in-house unless you have the company user ID or LLP ID. It is similar to that. You can't file income tax return in someone's ID. If you want to file your income tax return, you should log in on your own uh, PAN, on your own user ID password and go and submit the income tax return. So here is similar to that. If company wants to submit uh, uh, its files on its own and uh, it can do on its own user id if they want to take the help of professionals like you and me they can also take the professional help and professional also can upload so you have two gateways to upload your forms one it may be a company user id and llp user id one more you have the uh, professional user id one more also there that is for director you know the director also can upload the forms from using his user id similarly like in the within the company you have a ceo cfo company secretary again they can also file using this user ids but there are some otps that uh, we have to control the otps and all. so again again it must be a business user only company or llp should provide the pan number uh, thereafter company should provide the uh, lpin uh, scene or com uh, foreign company, of course, FCRN. In case of uh, LLP, they should provide LPIN. The data will be extracted automatically and data of incorporation, everything will be extracted. Uh, and then again, the email ID of the company, of course, they are not verifying the email ID that is there in the master data of the MCA. Uh, they are not verifying the registered email ID that is there in the MCA, but I'm, I feel maybe in the days to come, they may say that you register email ID should be the email ID that is given to the MCA, but right now they are not regulating. And OTP, you know, the OTP purpose, this is the year the name is written like Rashmi Singh Day. Rashmi Singh Day is one of the directors of the company. So this, if you go to the drop down, you will get all the directors list. 
now tell me which director uh, is available to receive the OTP. So you can tag while creating the user ID for the company that particular director can receive the OTP either for creation of the user ID like a business user ID company or LLP or tomorrow some forms filed that that particular gentleman also will get the OTP to file the forms. So that is the one control. So without knowledge of the director forms cannot be uploaded through the company user ID. That one should be very careful. That must be the reason they are collecting the OTP from the director. Thereafter you will get the password. You should create a password into question. Then three password three OTPs will be uh, there to create the company or LLP user ID. One OTP will be on the company's uh, director's mobile that one we just now we gave the name of the director because in the drop down you will get any director's name again the director's o, o mobile which is there in the din data bank as per your din kyc only that mobile will get the otp so that mobile will get the otp similarly otp comes on the company officials or any other person who is creating the user id he will also get one mobile otp and thereafter company's email ID uh, there will be OTP again. So all three OTPs are valid only for the one minute and if you are not able to gather all three OTPs in within one minute and you will not be in a position to use them and when ever one minute you will keep on getting different different OTPs. This is a challenge to use the subsequent OTPs which are synced with the three OTPs. So this is a challenge. So it may be creation only, maybe later filing, maybe OTPs are not three, maybe two I'm thinking. We'll see how it goes. So once you create the user ID, you will get the message like this on your mobile, uh, sorry, email ID uh, where you have given, like you have got a business user. Then professional staff, this is that I was telling when introduction. So here, your staff also can create a user ID called business user ID. And there you should tag your details and also they should tag their own details. So it is like in a principal and agent. So you will be an agent to you and all activities are carried on by you only. If something goes wrong, some form is filed, maybe instead of blaming the staff, they will blame you only the form. So one should be very careful allowing the professional staff to create the user IDs. Of course, ultimately blame comes on us only. So how the professional user ID is again I told you know so who can create professional user ID like trainees of professional firms then uh, you can non professional members working with the firm also can create. Of course who is a professional you all know that uh, ICSI, ICI or ICWA members are called professionals for the company act purpose for the MCA purpose. So they are their trainees their non technical members, technical you know the staff and all can be called uh, professional staff members they can create it so if you don't have a professional member if you have got a business access to file the form you can do so maybe you have a professional or you have a director you can file the form so if you are not a, if you don't have a professional member you cannot create the professional user id first but you can create the business user and different categories. So from that also you can file forms for a respective LLP only. Because what is the role why you have created business user? You have created business user to perform certain roles of a particular company. So unless you are associated with the company as director or LLP partner, you can't do anything. So that is a role of a business user who has not having I know who is not having the professional membership. This is the one exactly so many user IDs can be created. You can create three or four uh, professional uh, users uh, well within the professional user like you can have staff member one, staff two, staff three, staff four. You can create it. So if you want you can create uh, multiple also that is allowed. This is the sign up page. Uh, this I told you already earlier I shown this. Um, this how to create the professional user uh, staff registration again you should select the business then you have a staff member right now this functionality we tried yesterday is not properly functional. 
it is asking mandatorily certain things uh, not functional probably they will make properly functional soon that's what today also they informed us again professional member fan they say uh, the staff member fan is not mandatory because they are collecting our details so they are not asking see in the, here is the role who under whom you this particular staff member is working we need to provide our details our membership details and pan number of that so your details pan number everything will be provided and they will tag the user id with your pan tan and your mobile number will be taken your email id will be taken and you will be given otp from time to time when the staff member is interacting with the user id of course these are the details of the staff they are collecting his details also name date of birth gender of course again the address should be given by country first they should give the email id of the staff should be provided mobile number of the staff should be provided then once you provide password confirmation of password again that gentleman should have a int question int answer then he can also have the alerts on his mobile whatever whenever he interacts the uh, mca portal uh, as a staff member so he can also get the same so again three as i told you know to create a user id as a staff member you should rely on your mobile otp so as a professional you will get a mobile otp and there is a otp on his mobile another otp on the gmail account of yours it is not the staff gmail so you will be giving two otps and he will get one otp so total three otp should be provided then only user id will be confirmed means registered so it will get like you got congratulation you got the so on so so this is the staff members registration and profile updation this is all about the migration of registered user at mca version 2 to the registered business user of mca version 3 so registered user can migrate himself into the business user but what is the challenge what we notice till date if the business registered user has multiple ids uh, and using common mobile number common you know pan card or common email id then none of the id can be migrated into professionals system say that this particular email id is used for other multiple uh, you know user ids so that is a challenge we are facing and they are also trying initial they told us we are trying to unlock all those uh, pan uh, pan number and email id mobile number from all existing version to user ids but they are not able to do it i don't know what is the reason they are trying so for your knowledge my own user id is not getting migrated i send messages to the ministry even today also I interacted but it is not happening so the migration is not happening the another fortunate or unfortunate once you make an attempt a uh, first time you may log in and if you are unable to complete the migration that is uh, migration means you should select the, your role as a uh, registered user to the professional user uh, business user then within the professional user then you provide your institution details you provide your pan details then you give into question then you give the password then do this 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 after that assume that it is not happening something the screen went off over next time migration is not there next time i try to migration is not there it's not allowing me to go further i am stuck for last one and a half month i am stuck i am not able to migrate it system is like that only today so probably they may update they will allow multiple attempts to migrate one attempt over current system is like that so many my friends are also stuck like that so they must have created some user id someone some other professional help they are taking to upload any form today so this is the migration how it happens though they are given is artmail account but there is no artmail earlier you have a migra user id as any name or any alpha name whatever it is then you provide the password of old system and uh, next it will go to the next page yeah once you log in here you see the top so top right hand corner like your name will come hello and so on so then you have profile update then below the logout so if you go to the profile update then you will get the user selection so you are invariably 
required to select the user ID, user category now. It should be either two, business user ID only. Now registered user is already there, so you can't save it. Even if you save registered only as a registered user, the role is to perform only to get the LLP name and LLP incorporation. Only these two you can do. If you want to do further jobs like a director, like a, a partner or even the professional, then you don't have any option. You should create yourself as a business user and in the business user again, you should select whether you want to uh, go with a director role or you want to play with a, um, a professional role, you should select it. Then you can edit the email account, you can edit your mobile number, edit the place of where you are and then all, all other things can be edited. Once you select the business user uh, and then you need to select what is the role, the next uh, right side is there, what is your role? like your director, manager, secretary, other as a representative, professional, you have to select it. Thereafter, you can take the roles and provide your institute details. Like if you want to register your digital dignity as a professional, again, you need to, like a director, as I told you, you know, director DIN number and association of digital dignity to the DIN number can happen only like this only. It cannot happen beyond any other method. So once you go to the profile update there, like similar to the change of principal contractor, contract details in your income tax website. Similarly, there you should go, here it should come here and update your digital signature. Right now, this particular feature is not functional. We tried ourselves, it's not happening. So we, whatever the role check that you are doing without login at the version two is being accepted, even version three also. So that user ID, that uh, digital signature, you do role check there and it is taking now, but in way forward, they want to have the login and thereafter only associating the digital signature to uh, through a particular user ID. And system will collect your, uh, um, one is that IP address from where you are using the system and some other credentialities also will be collected as an evidence. Tomorrow, maybe dispute arises, who has permitted to log in into the director's login and did do the digital signature registration or to file some forms, maybe question that later date. That may be the idea. So once you provide all those alterations in your existing user ID and henceforth you will be called as a business user, either it may be professional or it may be director or it may be like a company secretary, CEO, CFO, or it may be officer default or a professional. So any role you can perform while migrating in the version three. But migration is only once, as I told you, know, once only is allowed, you cannot change them from time to time migration from one role to other role, you can't modify it. This edit option, which are there no. once you migrate, no, all edit option will go, probably one, two edit option will be there. You can change, if you are a director, those two also will not be there. You are a professional, you can change your mobile number. Only that much you can do, but director, the mobile number, email ID should be changed only filing DR6. You can't change here. Forget password, as I already told you, this is the maybe version 2 or version 3, how, the, how to retrieve the password. So you go to the forget password option, provide your existing uh, version 3 ID and proceed further. Then the first question that is asked into question into question and into answer, then it will be OTP verification also there. And through digital signature also, your password can be tried. So, but into question is must. The email ID is must, into question is must, but you can get OTP verification uh, through your mobile or DSC verification means you can log in your digital signature and you can retry your password. That option also is available. Yeah, so one more future is there. You can, that is one I told, you know, uh, for professionals, there is a PAN mandate is there. So you need to provide PAN number and your int answer. Date of birth, whatever it is you have selected and OT verification, again, DSC verification. Either of the option, you go next and you will get the password retrieved. So associate DSC, this is the future right now you have uh, without login. 
but the it is expected to go with only through the in fact the initial days they were enforced this option but the system was not enabling us to register the dscs after login now this feature temporarily they disabled but the, it is going to be mandatory feature and one should associate so you need to have the user id for each digital signature that's not that much i can tell you when how many digital signatures are there that many user ids are required in that mca then only you can log in otherwise you cannot associate this is the one uh, to go to a uh, website there you go to the llp service associate dscc look at this in the my mca service you have the feature called associate dsc this feature right now is not there they remove this feature and uh, there you will come here is the one software that you should install before your signature token to recognize on the system you need to download one socket uh, installer if you download from here it will get installed on your pc and then uh, it will uh, go ahead similarly there is a latest um, em bridge software also is needed so these two software should be installed on your pc uh, wherever you want to do the digital signature dsc role check it is a mandate otherwise you can't do it and here the select the token select the certificate details and provide a password of the digital signature digital signature then it will get registered so you'll get a message like congratulation with a pan number with tin number with so and so membership number you got the your digital signature registered so very crucial step it is i think with this so i am done so with the presentation what is the time now yeah around 10 minutes in ahead to the schedule so i request to you guys if you got any question answers we just move on but uh, i can answer only with my limited knowledge of theory uh, i tried even practically at many many cases we are unable a few cases only we are successful so if you got any specific queries probably i will not be in a position to answer so i will certainly try to analyze and if you got any issue certainly we should write to the mca right now mca has given even uh, for our institute also they are given one excel sheet uh, that google form is provided and all your queries can be posted in the google form i think institute will be in a position to share the google form given by the mca or created by our institute so that google form will help us to resolve it in that google form you can put that your query and also ticket number and then they will call you if it is so priority they will call you that's what today we are told that uh, they will call you they will interact with you and try to resolve the, all the issues priority wise one question on the uh, chat yeah, what is the correct process to upload form 11 of llp in the new v3 website uh, yeah. i think the form 11 is again you need to do login uh, either as a business user uh, within the business user you need to log in as a director or the role of dp or a professional user these two people are allowed to go to the website inside the website get the empty form in the pdf in the xml version that is in the online version to get the empty form first you should be business user either as a dp or a professional only these two people are allowed to access the forms. There, most of the field, as you all know that, Form 11, almost all fields are pre-filled, including earlier, in fact, if you look at the Form 11 old version, we were attaching the list of the uh, LLPs or the companies where you are designated partner and the directors. That was the PDF document we are enclosing as per the format given in the form 11 at the end. But today, that they have even added in the well within the form, it is just pre -filled. If you put the DIN number or PAN, or LPIN number, sorry, DPIN number of the partner, all of the, his data bank is displayed. The one practical problem what we witnessed is, it goes, see, as per the form 11, we are supposed to give only the active directorships or active DP ships. Whereas the current system is 
pre-filling almost all your DIN diesel signal director positions since you, are, you obtain the DIN number. So it will be around 1050 pages. I think this book they have not even sorted out. So that is one challenge is there. Right now in the form 11, that is the reason they have extended time till to the next uh, this month end. So uh, probably by that time they will, uh, uh, without additional fees, they have extended time. So they will certainly sort out that. Uh, some forms, if suppose uh, the DIN, uh, this particular gentleman is not a, a partner, DP or even the director, not any other company, there is no problem. Because that data will not get pre-filled and you can upload the form because the form is correct. Suppose a person has having this whole idea of again collecting the data is that now they brought the concept called 20 membership, 20 DPs and 20 directorships. That they want to cross verify in each filing that you do. That is the idea. So in active uh, DPs, the director position, director positions or the uh, designated partner positions, you can be only maximum 20. They want to capture the data somewhere and say you, your statement will be there at the end. Whatever the data filled over there is correct and true. So you have, they want to make you responsible by filling that data automatically because you will be affixing your digital signature as a DP and thereafter a professional will be attaching based, based on the turnover and based on the net worth or the director, another director will be verifying the form 11. So this is the one challenge we have. Another challenge, what I understood, I think this is the form to LLP2, now the um, uh, Philips. Suppose you select the contribution as a, other than cash, they are insisting violation report at the time of incorporation itself. So if you select for the cash, then they are not insisting. I just saw that in the rules and uh, LLP forms and all, one of the rules of LLP says the same thing. The violation report should be uh, from a registered valuer and whenever partnership or the LLP in the form three or even with the incorporation, if any partner brings his contribution other than cash, it should be valued by a registered valuer and that valuation report should be attached to the form. That is a mandatory thing now. Earlier, the old form two or the Philips or the even 11, whatever it is, that valuation was not a part of the report. Now it is made mandatory because I think they must have studied extensively the rule. So whatever the rule says, no, now they are implementing it. So violation is mandatory and it is the one. So 11, as I told you clearly, it has its own hiccups. If the form is very small, latest, uh, you know, partners are not partners here and there, probably you can file the form. And I understood, suppose you are filing the form for the year 2021 20, or year for 1920. Now the, since uh, the latest table of form uh, fees, is effective from the 1st April 2022 onwards. So you will be end up paying on rather 100 rupees per day, which was there in the old system, I think section 69 of the LLP Act. Now the 69 was modified. They say that whatever the, from time to time government, now up to 365 days, I think you will be paying uh, some uh, 40, no? 14 times, I think. yeah. You will be paying 14 times if the form is delayed up to 12 months, 14 times of the normal filing fees and beyond the 12 months every day if it is a small LLP every day small LLP means the LLP having less than 25 lakhs contribution or the turnover of 40 lakhs uh, it should uh, pay only 10 rupees per day earlier it was 100 rupees for every day from day one within after 30 days it was there now after 365 days that is a 14 times plus the 10 rupees per day, but this is the 10 rupees is unlimited period. It runs like a meter. So depending upon number of days delays after 365 days, you have to pay 10 rupees if it is a small LLP. And if it is a big LLP means having turnover, having the capital, then they need to pay 20 rupees. Okay, similarly other farms, I think you need to pay around 20, 25 times. Then there is a 50 times maximum. Other farms, there is no running fees like 10 rupees. There, there is a maximum slap is there other farms, but form 8 and 11, the maximum it runs. Earlier it was running with 100 rupees, today it runs with 10 rupees and 20 rupees. So this particular 10, 20 rupees as I understood may continue 
because uh, if you look at the latest circular what they given with respect to the waiving of additional fees they have said clearly the llp forms falling due and so on so date that is a due but they said due so the llp forms for the year 21 22 will fall on due on 30th may that is the date they are given 30th may so all old forms there is no due date is not a due date exactly it is they cross the due date they are in the running meter for them i feel the circular will not help so for them you need to file the form as early as possible or you need to ready to pay 10 rupees daily i think they should have extended that also uh, that is my submission but they have not given any amina skip for those forms so they will collect 10 rupees or 20 rupees as the case may be for old forms for only for the year 21 and 22 due date falling on 30th may 2022 you have till the june without additional fees so that is the one relief they are given so of course uh, we hope that uh, system may be stabilized and by june we'll be in a position to file all the form events of all llps yeah any other question you have there's one more question could you please repeat about associate dsc yeah, yeah. see the associate dsc is again as i told you clearly who is interacting the mca it may be for associating the dsc of a director who has associated the dsc that they want to track they say that association can happen individual wise which i have already given you correlated with your income tax uh, principal contract details like updating your dsc unless you log in a particular client with his user id like pan number you can't attach his digital signature there your client digital signature should be attached to his own user id here also director user id only should be used for attaching his digital signature to his din number his user id should be used that they want to know that exactly under which pc under which ip address under which user id this particular digital thing means when you associate dsc the director will get otp because this measure they have taken to me whatever the misuse happened till date like removal of director with someone's knowledge without someone's knowledge a misuse of like you know wrong use also so they want to curb this practice the registration why registration is needed assume the director has his own digital signature and they, this person wants to use digital signature earlier they used to get one more digital signature because buying digital signature like buying a pen you can buy one number of pens like see you you know that see like i what is that called iec website requires different and income tax requires different pf department requires different and then roc requires now of course class 3 signature only earlier it was class 2 so a single signature may not be useful for the same director to interact with various i was told around 21 departments of especially uh, central government departments are using the digital signatures so for at least as i know four by signatures are required to be obtained now so there is a probability someone else would have obtained digital signature and someone else would have tried to register his digital signature so all those things they want to curb now they want to i know go with the director is responsible for his own digital signature and he is responsible because what if he comes to his register email id and register mobile number so he cannot bluff tomorrow saying that my digital signature someone else misuse this basically to pinpoint the director that he is responsible he made someone to use his digital signature he made someone to log in his digital signature all those things so it is a welcome move initial see we should not take everything light in spite of you know see so many people getting arrested unwarrantedly have so many charges you know aligned to the professionals you have is my digital signature you increase the capital you reduce the capital are you allotted are you transferred are you made someone resigned someone you resignation someone removal all professionals why professionals should be centered i think the digital signature should not be with the professional house professionals home or professionals even the offices it should be with the digital signature of the particular now after filling the form in the version 3 the system allows you to fill the form and send by email and the other gentleman can open the email 
can affix the digital signature and send it back to you and you can upload by using your own user id so this, that being the case i feel we should not hold the digital signature of the clients so association of professional again the professional signature can be associated only by registered professional user id only nothing else an assistant cannot assist can, cannot register your digital signature by using his user id he cannot do it so this is the importance of the digital signature because very crucial now you all know that how digital signatures are generated now digital signatures earlier there was a photocopy a pan photocopy of your id user id photos all were there now they want to misuse it they say the video verification is a must now so uh, as i told earlier also there is a probability they may take up your um, iris also there is a maybe west there is not far off days to come because the software already developed so what i am trying to say digital signature obtaining is not possible by someone else now the same director should obtain same director to register the digital signature that is end to end security they have created now through the west entry portal similarly for every individual who is interacting they want to know who is interacting what is his function what is doing and i have seen yesterday one message if some goof up is happening like suppose someone is continuously trying to log in and his otps are not matching or the is delaying is trying to do simultaneous two three logins that particular tracking the particular activity has been tracked they have said yesterday i saw one of the document they released it. that activity will be tracked and that activity will be live tracked by the system because where you are ultimately you are in their system in their environment after login you are in their environment and how many forms you have filled and left also they will be knowing why the form is filled before director is removed tell me today you have a board meeting and before director is removed you already filled the form and kept the form saved and each moment what your form is filled will be known by the ministry that means it is after thought conducting board meeting is just paper meeting so these are the thing one should be imagine no one should imagine where you will land up and all so careful when you are interacting with the mca probably mca is the one system i think in entire india is going to be you know dynamic more dynamic and more specific more precision in gathering the information whoever is interacting so you see that now using the technology throughout i was told in us you can be tracked anywhere any crime that you only hardly seconds to track where you are so it is going to be in india also in mca system maybe that's a heading towards it so i hope i am clarifying all the whatever doubt you have as per my understanding but right now I know, as i told I clearly, clearly when flyover is for construction, construction and, and no also is allowed during the flyover or you can see even the what is that hebal flyover is very very congested now they are putting trying side lines but when while side lines are on the ebal flyover should be functional you can't stop because it's a signal free to the airport you can't stop similarly they are allowing the way what they could do filings are happening but some problems are there the problems are there if the director is in the more uh, a director or dean is used in more times in the system you got a problem if director has dean is a very fresh director and very fresh din is there you are not getting the problem uh, you know more complicated din you have like so director having 20 director say and 20 partners he form then you have a problem so that is the right now that their you know structure they have not gone to that extent they are just trying to visualize and trying to identify fix the bugs even today also they told that so they are confident uh, you will certainly fly over that's what exactly they are expecting maybe in month or two Uh, these are all unique features of the system but little difficulty is there during the construction stage that's what they told so we presume that it will happen any, any other, other questions ma'am oh sir that's it yeah, yeah. so thank you very much to guys for patience listening and uh, i don't know how much you are enriched but i got really enriched for last two days three days we did some such research and some googling we did 
we try to create almost all user ids and we could succeed most of the creations few cases we could not succeed so we could uh, with that uh, input we could provide today to the ministry also some of the inputs ministry said these bugs will be resolved soon so you made me to you know certainly to make me to study this system so i should thank to you it is more enrichment and enlarge you know knowledgeable to me so thank you very much for the ICI Bangalore branch for providing me an opportunity and trusting me about my knowledge. I hope I have delivered what I could. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Kavita. And other uh, office players of the Bangalore branch. Thank you, sir. And good evening, members. I'm sure it was an insightful uh, session for all of you. And we have must be having a lot of questions, though. Then we can always reach out to CS Tirupal uh, for any questions. I'm sure he will be able to address that. Um, so I, on behalf of Bengaluru branch, I thank uh, uh, wholeheartedly to CS Tirupal uh, Gaurgi for coming, taking his time out and his busy, busy schedule and then helping us out and enlightening the members of Bengaluru for this. Thank, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And thank you all the members uh, for attending this uh, uh, event and making it a grand success. Thank you. Thank you, thank you to all. Just give you this moment to present you this moment or so. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.